미국에서 아이비리그 명문대를 졸업한 뒤 월가에서 일하다가 돌연 한식 요리사가 된 한국인이 있습니다. 그러나 그녀의 선택은 틀리지 않았습니다. 영국의 요리 서바이벌 프로그램에서 여성 최초로 우승을 거머쥔 데다 TV 프로그램 진행자, 레스토랑 오너로서 열정적인 삶을 살고 있거든요. 바로 미국과 영국에서 한식 전도사로 유명한 주디주입니다. 한국에서 나고 자란 것도 아닌데 그녀의 한식에 대한 열정은 대단하다 싶을 정도입니다. 아이언 셰프에서도 김밥을 코리안 스시로 부르거나 고추장을 핫 페이스트 소스로 부르는 심사위원들에게 김밥과 고추장이라는 단어로 정정해주기도 했으며 운영하고 있는 레스토랑 모두 한식을 주제로 하고 있죠. 독특한 이력을 지닌 그녀가 콜롬비아 대학의 졸업식 연사로 초청받아 연단에 섰는데요. 자신이 이런 과감한 선택을 하게 된 계기와 과정, 존경에 맞지 않는 부모님에 대한 진솔한 이야기를 풀어놓아 화제가 되고 있습니다. 많은 미국인들이 감동한 그녀의 연설 내용을 함께 보시죠. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Judy Ju is a celebrated Korean American chef patron, television personality, author, and restauranteur. Her popular in restaurants named Jinju are located in London and Hong Kong. She is considered the foremost expert on Korean cooking in the West and a pioneer in spreading appreciation for Korean cuisine around the world. She is a regular face on morning shows on the Food Network, regularly writes for numerous publications, and pens a monthly column for OK Magazine, profiling celebrity chefs from all around America. We are thrilled to have her here with us today to give the keynote address. Please join me in welcoming Judy Ju. Good afternoon. Wow. I cannot believe that I'm actually here. President Bollinger, Dean Boyce, the Board of Trustees, and members of the Columbia faculty and staff, thank you for granting me this incredible honor. And congratulations to the class of 2018. <laughs> Now, I remember some 20-odd years ago when I was sitting where you are now. Admittedly, I was a bit hungover and struggling to stay awake. We didn't have Red Bull or Adderall back then, just good old Mountain Dew and coffee. So if some of you doze off, I understand. I've been there, and this explains why, when I was asked to deliver this speech, the first thing I did was look up who spoke at my class day, because I couldn't remember it all, let alone anything that was said. So I had to do some research in hope of finding some direction. I scoured the internet, I, I watched hours of commencement speeches, and I learned a few things. The first actually answered a question I already had in my mind. Why on earth would Dean Boyce ask me? Here I am, watching President Obama, Conan O'Brien, Steve Jobs, mega celebrities. Why was I, a chef of all things, asked to partake in such an honor? Yes, I can cook five dishes, including a dessert highlighting a single random ingredient like an octopus in one hour flat, but is that really a worthy skill? Well, the answer I found is simple. It's because Columbia has two rules in order to speak here at this very podium. One, you have to be an alum, and two, you have to be alive. <laughs> Still, it never occurred to me that I would be returning to campus in my cap and gown in this capacity, and as a result, I began to reflect on my four years here. And I realized that my memory is actually quite spotty. I remember some things very vividly, and other things not at all, like the majority of my classes. <laughs> I took about four levels of calculus, linear algebra, ordinary differential equations, and now I can barely split the bill or even calculate tip. So, yes, that just demonstrates how much time has passed and how much has changed since I was here. Another poignant example is that the subway was just a buck 25 back then. A slice of cornet pizza down the street was a dollar. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
But what perhaps really puts this into, into perspective is that all of my classmates and I, and some of them are sitting right there, hello, all of my classmates and I have one numerical digit next to our initials and our Columbia email addresses. We were literally the first class here with email. <laughs> yeah, we're that old. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One thing, though, that has not changed, and I do remember well, is being fearful. I was fearful when I first walked onto this campus as a freshman, and especially when I was sitting where you are today. I was scared for my future. I wasn't even going to become an engineer. I went straight to the exciting yet cutthroat world of Wall Street, where I embarked upon a career in fixed income derivatives. I didn't even know what that meant. What you have to realize, though, is that everyone is scared. What is going to set you apart is how you deal with that fear, how you can power through it. And if you have the relentless determination, fortitude, and sheer tenacity to transform all of that nervous energy and anxiety into courage. Courage to try, courage to take risks, and courage to face failure. Especially now, in your 20s, this is the time to be daring. You are freer now than you ever will be. And in the world, it is the time to be brave, to disrupt. We are seeing all traditional models and certainties vanish. I left my cushy, high-paying job in finance to pursue cooking. Now, that daring move wasn't in the playbook, and it most certainly was not in my parents' well-thought-out life plan for me, especially after all they had sacrificed for my education. But I had become disenchanted with the banking world, and as cliche as it does sound, I felt that life was too short to live a dream that someone else had for me. I had to at least try to pursue my passion and what I really wanted to do. So I decided to downgrade my life, work longer hours for less pay, and I entered the world of the culinary arts. Jumping off the fast track and away from a handsome paycheck, though, was very hard. I went from sitting in a nicely air-conditioned office behind a computer to standing for 15 plus hours a day behind a hot stove. I traded in my weekly spa manicures for hands and arms covered in burns, bruises, and cuts. In the evenings, instead of going out with friends or clients to a three Michelin star dinner, I cooked one. And at the end of the night, instead of going home happily buzzing with a belly full of Don Perignon and foie gras, I found myself covered in sweat, with an aching back, swollen feet, and a rather wounded ego. Of course, I often questioned my decision, especially when I had to do hours of mundane, menial work, like picking the stems off of hundreds of spinach leaves. I bet you've never even noticed that. Um, I hope now you'll appreciate that effort next time you have a salad. <laughs> okay, but I just kept at it and said, yes, chef, because deep down, I knew that leaving finance was the best thing that I ever did. And as hard as it was, I did not give up. I knew that success would come because I loved cooking. And that's where my talent lied. Parents, no doubt, right now, you are wishing that there was a different speaker standing here. <laughs> After all, who goes to an Ivy League school? I mean, how much does this place cost now? Okay. <laughs> to peel potatoes for a living. I understand, I am the daughter of two Korean immigrants. Mom and dad are right there. 
I am the product of tiger parenting. I had three piano lessons a week. I spent my summers in nerd camp. I was groomed to be a doctor, just like my dad. My mom came to the United States alone, which was unheard of back then to pursue a master's degree. My father, the eighth of nine kids, fled North Korea with his family when he was six and grew up in a refugee camp. <laughs> yeah, mom and dad are amazing.